Hello all, I'm your host Vivek. Welcome to another episode of Unfolding the Tech. In today's show, I'm talking to an online retailer, Zulili's Vice President of Machine Learning and Data Science, Oli Downs, and to Srikant Desai, a software engineering manager on the technology team. In today's conversation, we are gonna cover some very interesting topics from what unique business challenges does a global e-commerce company with a unique business model faces, how data science and machine learning is driving progress, to how the future of data science looks in an e-commerce industry going forward. So a lot of great content, stay tuned. Hey Ollie, welcome to the show. Would you mind uh, telling our viewers uh, what you do? Absolutely, Vivek. I run uh, data and machine learning here at Zulily. Uh, my background is I originally started my career at Microsoft Research and got to spin out Microsoft Research's first uh, startup company, which was a data and machine learning uh, driven company focused on the traffic information space called Inrix. I've done eight other machine learning enabled startup companies over my career and have uh, over 40 patents in the field. Awesome. Amazing career, Ali. Thanks. Hey, Srikant, Thank would you do the same? Can you please tell the viewers what you do? Sure. Um, I'm an engineering manager at Zulili right now. Um, been in the e-commerce space for more than eight years, um, mostly concentrating on cloud engineering infrastructure as well as machine learning. Uh, prior to that, I spent some time uh, in finance, banking and financial domain uh, for four years. Um, Right now, my con uh, concentration is mostly solving the machine learning problems for um, our customers, um, mostly on the e-commerce uh, related companies. Yeah. Thank you so much, both of you. Thanks for making the time. So let's dive right in. So Ali, first question is for you. Would you mind telling the viewers a little bit about Zulily and what is it focused on? Yeah, Zulily is focused on helping mom find unique uh, products at fantastic prices you know, primarily focused on her role for herself and for her family and for her home and we have a unique business model whereby we launch new sales events about 100 to 120 new sales events every day and up to about 6,000 new products available uh, through Zilli, Zulily on our app and store every day that makes for a very dynamic environment. These sales events typically last for three days, and so our inventory is, is continually changing. And that means we become an entertainment des destination for mom. Awesome, a great company, I know people love it. Wonderful. So Shrikant, what are some of the challenges your team faces from a technology perspective, keeping this company the way it is? Sure. Um, so as Ali mentioned, right, so some of the key challenges are the flash sale model. Uh, unlike any uh, product-based e-commerce, the biggest challenge we have is um, events are so dynamic. Um, today you see an item, tomorrow you don't see it. Uh, from machine learning point of view, what we see, uh, the way we build a model, um, if it is a product-based commerce, it's an easier to get the trends. Uh, we know what our customers are, we know what products we sell, and it's easy to get um, uh, trends and the insights about the uh, marketplace but here it's more of an event driven it's a dynamic uh, in nature that puts us in a hot spot uh, in terms of the technology challenges um, as as a as a community we have data scientists we have machine learning engineers then we have data engineers and all these domain specific people work for their particular domain but when they interact um, that's the biggest challenge the interface between them right so data scientists build a model and when they transfer it to uh, machine learning engineers um, the handoff is not smooth um, so solving those kind of problems and similarly when a data engineers build their pipelines those should meet the requirements of the machine learning engineers as well as the data scientists right uh, those things there is an a cross functional handoff which is always causing a problem uh, that's where we are trying to solve a problem how a machine learning engineering model can be built and it can be deployed in the production 
without having these frictions in between. Um, still, the people are involved, data engineers, data scientists and the machine learning, and they do their part and make sure we have systems in place to deploy these models in the production uh, without causing much of uh, kind of, you know, over the throw over the wall of, um, in, you know, kind of situation. Um, yeah, that's what we are solving at Zululi right now. Oh, wonderful. Um, so I'm sure, I mean, I have worked with many large enterprises who are, you know, trying to get into the machine learning and data science world. And these challenges are just multiplied there. So I'm sure that uh, in our conversation today, people can learn from it, how you're trying to solve those. So uh, given, uh, given the technology ch challenges that Srikant just talked about, Ali, how does your team impact uh, the Zulili business? It's a it's an interesting um, it's an interesting area of effect in the sense that we're we're very nicely able to measure the incremental impact that our um, machine learning driven capabilities um, enable for the business through experimentation. So we maintain ongoing experiments, and our primary use cases focus on uh, personalization of the app, our daily email which really is our announcement of the flash sales that we're running every day and is a primary driver um, of traffic to our site. We explore um, with our merchant and vendor operations partners how to use machine learning techniques to better manage inventory. And we work very closely with our uh, marketing teams both to drive our paid channel execution and optimization, and then also our own channel communications, both, as I said, via the app and email, push notifications and, and SMS messaging to mom. Okay, got it. So Srikant, um, as all you described, your team is doing uh, some amazing work uh, in accelerating Zulili's business. So in all this, how is Google Cloud helping uh, your entire workflow? Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, so all this machine learning or whatever uh, artificial intelligence we talk about, everything is backed up by the data. And we use GCP for our, all our data related um, problems. Uh, for example, from storing it in BQ, uh, setting up the Airflow jobs, uh, then training, we use uh, heavily a Qflow for the training purposes and then uh, storing them in the GCS buckets. So we pretty much use a lot of Google components here. This is where the GCP plays a big part. So we are multi-cloud. If you look at um, the way Zululi works is uh, the whole site runs on AWS, but um, all these machine learning related activities happens on the GCP. And we want to kind of um, solve the problems in terms of how we can port the solution to multi clouds, right? So you build model on the GCP and you need to port it to the another cloud. Uh, that's where the Kubernetes uh, containerization, everything help us. So another option we uh, adopted is um, one problem which I had um, I missed to mention before is the one of the thing uh, we face is um, the feature engineering work, which is very, very critical for machine learning work that's something we do on GCP, right? So we uh, we picked up an open source tool called Feast. Um, that's basically allowed us to kind of uh, avoid the feature drift. And that's one of the problem we face. And also model explainability, we need kind of, uh, when the features are served in the production, uh, when the features are built in the offline, we need to make sure they are consistent. The data transformation between them uh, happens in the right way and make sure uh, there is no drift between the feature what we use to train the model versus what we are serving. And the biggest challenge is serving them at the lowest latency. That's where the feast come in. And uh, uh, the reason we picked the feast is because of we are on GCP, right? I mean, that works really well uh, uh, with those combinations, right? Um, com coming to a workflow, so we start our process uh, extracting the data, which is BQ. We build the model on top of it. Uh, we uh, ingest the features. Again, we use BQ for that. That's our data warehouse. That's a snapshot. And then once your data is stored as features, those can be used for uh, retraining the models because you already store the data. Your feature is there in the BQ uh, warehouse system. Then you can retrain the models 
that's how the iteration of model continues that's where the experimentation comes in um, then once you build a model we store in gcs buckets then we write a uh, cube specs to deploy these models into the production great i'm happy to hear that google cloud is adding value to your mission um, that's perfect so in continuation what is your approach to uh, experimentation and modeling i know you touched a little bit can you elaborate a little bit uh, on that yeah, sure. I mean, this is basically a continuation of what I was talking. Yeah. Um, so uh, in a day to day life, right? So data scientists come to offices and they start building the models, right? Uh, for them, the important thing is data availability. Uh, that's where the BQ comes in. We provide all the data through the BQ. And once the data is provided, um, they start their experimentation, they start their analysis, they run multiple iterations of the model. That's where uh, the Q flow uh, again, which is hosted on top of the GCP, uh, we run multiple experiments there um, to make sure the data is built and we want to train our model at the scale. Um, what that means is we don't want our data scientists to train the model at their laptop and when it comes to the real-time uh, production serving, we see lots of drift there. So we want to make sure the training environment and the serving environment are matching. So to make sure uh, we have hosted Jupyter Notebooks, um, you can train model at the scale. Uh, we use H2O, uh, TensorFlow right now. Um, the models can be trained at the scale. That's in data science workflow, right? So they build the models and they train the model at the scale and they containerize them. And then while doing that, they know that what features are used for the training the model and those features will be stored in the feast, which, we, which I uh, touched uh, upon that in the previous uh, discussion. Um, the where they kind of store their features which are available for uh, reusability or also they are available for serving in the production. So you don't have to kind of uh, recreate these features when you want to do it in the, uh, when you want to serve it in the production. So that's where the data scientist part finishes and they store their model, deploy the model, register their model, and they are done. That's then the MLEs come in, they pick this model and make sure um, they serve this model in the production at the scale. Um, so you built a model and this uh, production, it has to be served in the model uh, production at the scale. Uh, if I talk about the scale, uh, again, since Zululi is like event-based, so every day we send uh, emails to, um, millions of customers and the computations are in uh, in the scale of billions uh, those needs to happen during particular time window that's a um, that's a kind of challenge we have and we use um, online serving uh, again which is from the feast which internally uses redis uh, to serve these models um, this is a complete uh, end to end flow how it works in the yeah Part of the, I'd add that part of the benefit of this, it's, it's taken us from weeks to operationalize new uh, model features um, for, for our runtime environment down to one or two days when we're adding key um, critical features that, are, that we found that drive our models. And so this has significantly increased our ability to um, experiment with new models live on our customer base at a very rapid pace. Awesome. I'm honestly saying this is really a well-defined approach and I'm sure others in uh, the parallel industries can learn from, from it. And you know, data science is not that as complicated if you have the well-defined approach and it's mandatory now uh, for people to start utilizing those technologies. So Oli, uh, I don't want to keep you both any longer here. I know uh, you're taking your important time from your day of work. So here's my last question for the day. In your opinion, what does the future of data science look like at Zolili and in general, in your opinion? Look, our data science past meant that every business problem that we set about solving with, with machine learning involved us building a, an independent stack, both uh, feature creation and management, operationalization for training, operationalization for model serving, and the services um, supporting those models into the business use case. Every single one of those things was a separate technology stack. The future for us is massive feature reuse, powered as um, Srikant was talking about by our work uh, with Feast um, on Google BigQuery, 
and being able to serve that in a multi-cloud environment, it allows us to massively scale up the throughput of data scientist experimentation. And then when you think about model training and orchestration of complicated environments, you know, we're also getting massive acceleration there, which is really around you know, not having to configure the model training infrastructure thanks to the power of things like Qflow. So this is really all for us for the future about scaling up the number of places that we can impact our business with high scale machine learning and really proliferating um, the number of business impacting use cases. Wonderful, good to hear that. So thanks a ton, Ali and Srikan for coming on the show and I'm sure viewers are gonna love the insights. Uh, so, and thanks everybody for tuning in. Until next time, stay safe and bye. Thanks. Thank you, Rick. Thank you, Vivek. Thank you.